What's going on everybody? Welcome back. It's been a minute. I've had some people reach out to me directly, like friends and family that I like, get wild the videos. And they were like, you're giving out all this different information. If you could just give like some general help, just general tips, things you think ever would help everybody. I mean, I have some really specific things, but you've been a banking for a decade, you've been in the military, you've been around the planet, seen all these different places, met all these different people, you know all this stuff. Just give me a list of things, like basic things that should help everybody in their finance. Like if I just want to do better, what are some things that you would help anybody? But if I had to, these are seven things that I think everybody needs to know. Like if you're just trying to get better with your finances, these are this is where I would start. These are the seven, not steps, but seven tips from someone who's done this entirely too long. But the first thing, set financial goals. You have to have goals. I know that life will life and things will happen and goals and your know, targets are meant to be changed, but you can't hit a target you can't see. And if you don't have a target, you definitely can't hit it. Me personally, I have three, 12, three months, 12 months, three years, and five year goals of things that I want to accomplish. You can use your own time frame, but you got to have some goals. Even if it's, I want to get out of credit card debt by this date, or I want to have my car paid off, I want to have the house paid off, or I want to pay off my student loans, or whatever it is, you have to have financial goals. Something. You have to outline something specific that you're trying to achieve. If you don't have financial goals, you'll never get anywhere. I feel like most people have this. But in case you don't, if you're wondering where's a good place to start, step one is looking at your finances and establishing, all right, what do I want to do? Even if it's, try not to be vague, like I want to make a bajillion dollars, but have specific, direct financial goals. And set a timeline to them too. Like I want to have this paid off by this time, or I want to have this much saved by this time. But the first thing I want to tell everybody, you got to have financial goals. Uh, the second thing I want to tell everybody, you need a budget. Um, I made a video about that. I think I'll put it up in the corner. If I remember when I'm doing the editing, I hate editing. You need a budget. You'll never hit that goal which you just came up with without a budget. You just won't. You have to have a budget. If you don't know where your money's coming from and where it's going, you don't have any control of your finances, you can't steer them in the direction where you want to go. You have to have a budget. I know that's an ugly, boring word that nobody likes to do, but you have to have a budget. I have a budget. I don't always stick to it because I like candy. <laughs> but you have to have a budget, period. That is a non-negotiable for me. Everybody has to have a budget. I think that's universal across the board. Third thing I want to say about it, you should be investing. Now to be clear, I strongly believe that everybody should be investing for retirement and tomorrow. Something, the earlier you start, the better. If you, I don't care if you're 18, you should be putting something away for retirement because if you're young, time is on your side. And if you're older, you're probably making more money. And you don't have as much time for it to grow, but everyone should be investing in their future. And that doesn't just mean financial. Like you should be investing in your health, eating healthier foods, going to the gym. Like everyone should be investing for future you because future you will be thankful that current you did the things that you're doing if you're investing for tomorrow. Number four, this one will apply to most people. And if it doesn't apply to you, I get it. But try to diversify your income if possible. Now, if you're investing for tomorrow, your investment will have income that you should be reinvesting the returns on that. That's a set stream of income. If there's something you're good at, there's something you're good at. I know there's something you're good at. You don't think that you're good at something, but I know you're good at something. And no matter what it is that you're good at, you can probably make money off of it. And if you suck at everything because you want to be, you know, just, oh, woe is me, drive for Uber, DoorDash, Grubhub. If you want to hit on Upwork or Fiverr, have something separate you do that generates some form of income. And that money, you invest. But everybody, if possible, should have multiple streams of income within reason. I'm not one of those hustle bros that says, before the sun gets up, I've got three LLCs and $4 million and seven. It, no, to hell with all that. But think about creative ways to generate income other than trading your hours for dollars. Point the fifth, I want to think, debt management. If you have no debt, you're probably pretty young or really old. But for like everybody else in the middle, your mortgage, your car note, your student loan, your credit card debt. Debt management is a huge part of getting anywhere in anywhere financially. Those goals you want to hit, one of them is probably paying down some debt. Now, if you have no debt, kudos to you, young or old person, or maybe you're middle-aged and you've done really well for yourself. But managing your debt is important because regardless of how much money you make with investments, it will never outpace what the interest is on your debt. Never. Debt management is huge. You need to know who you owe to what and how much that money is costing you so you can see who needs to get paid off first. Number six, 
an emergency fund. Life is going to life. Shit happens. It just does. You need an emergency fund. I've got friends who've been watching the videos who've asked me what's something they should get into. And I tell them, if you're not saving for tomorrow, which you should be, you absolutely need an emergency fund. Life is going to happen. It just is. You told me one person was going six months without something happening in life. You, you liar. And I'll show you a goddamn liar. <laughs> no, life is gonna happen, so you need an emergency fund. I get it, some people live in the paycheck to paycheck, like myself, and they're struggling to make ends meet. All the more reason why you need an emergency fund. Find a way, after you look at that budget, you know, the plan I gave you a few steps ago, and carve out something so you can start saving money for when life happens. Life will happen, and you absolutely need an emergency fund, which is not your investment. Like, your 401k is not an emergency fund. It's not. Your emergency fund needs to be liquid. Liquid is just a rich people way of saying that you can get to it easy. Cash in under your bed, under your pillow. That's liquid. Your 401k, not liquid. Just mean they can pour into it fast. And all a day fancy terms get to you. But you need an emergency fund. It's the money you can get to if something happens. And number seven. I saved this one for last because it's very near and dear to me. And I find it's probably one of the most important ones. A financial education. Most schools that I know of do not teach financial education. They don't. People get out of high school and without going to like, you know, college or grad school or second education, they don't understand the fundamentals of money, like a debit card versus a credit card, APY versus APR, uh, HELOC versus he loan, or a fixed loan versus a variable loan, or checking versus the savings. These are basic fundamental things that everybody needs to understand. You just have to. Do you need to understand what a P.E. forward ratio is? No. Do you perhaps need to know how to read a balance sheet? No. Do you need to know what the delta is between a stock and this? No. Do you need to know the Greeks for option chains? No. That kind of stuff to me is kind of esoteric and everybody doesn't need it. But fundamental finance, like financial education, 110%, you need that. You should be getting that. That's kind of what I'm here for. This is why I'm doing this. Hopefully, I'm giving the right information to the right person at the right time to, you know, provide some positive effect in their life. Financial education is number one, the one thing you have to have. You got to know what's going on with your money and how any of this stuff works. If I say that's a credit card, not a debit card, and you're like, eh, that's simple. Debit card, your money. Credit card, someone else's money. Easiest way to distinguish the two of them. So when I say I'll break it down to make it real easy for everybody to understand, that's exactly what I'll do. I try to explain stuff to where if you're explaining it to a 10 year old or an 80 year old who knows nothing about money, they both would understand what it means. But uh, that's me, man. I don't have some fancy gimmick. I don't have some catchphrase. I'm just trying to give the right information to the right people at the right time to help them out. And hopefully I am. If you found the video helpful, by all means leave me a like. If you got feedback on things that change you differently, leave them in the comments below. If there's something you want me to cover, please let me know. You can catch me on the Facebook page. I've got that. Uh, there's an Instagram page. I've got that. And obviously, you can leave it in the comments here. But that's me, man. Just trying to do some good in this world. Trying to help out somebody. Just, you know, who else? All right, man. I'll take it easy.